most truly Taking the pills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, it is uh, now nine o'clock. Oh, hang on. We'll get the, <laughs> the most important part of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the some people uh, are in need waking up. Right. Yes. Oh, oh, bless you. Thank you very much, Alex. Smile on the camera. <laughs> 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 right, I'll start again. Welcome. Uh, the, the health and safety, we uh, clearly see where the uh, exit signs are. The toilets are round out through past the uh, info centre. Uh, and the unlikelihood of a um, fire or whatever, earthquake. Make our way out and all refresh and get over the that clear field, then stand there and pray to God. So, um, first up, we have the apologies. I have one from Pip and I have one from Rebecca. Rebecca's got a power cut in Greyhound and can't get online, but she's trying her what? best to uh, rectify that and she will zoom in. We have Pam and we have. Leave on Zoom. Hi guys. I'm working. Uh, is there any conflicts? Oh, can someone move that we accept that else? Or um, yeah, any conflicts? Uh, can I just note that this, uh, I have made a conflict of interest on the Peterson and Wastewater issue with my consenting report. Right, uh, public participation we have uh, Perry Cameron. Welcome Perry. You uh, pretty well know the drill for now. <laughs> so you do need, you don't need to leave any time for too much questions because we'll discuss this issue later on uh, as on the agenda. So welcome. welcome. Uh, we've got a timer here, so thank you. And councillors, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, really giving a bit of background into something which has actually become a joint venture between what is now my family trust that owns the block of residential land in Lake Berry. Uh, I attended a local government uh, conference meeting in the Eden, probably. 15, 20 years ago now, and locked on to the interflow system. And over the years, I, uh, I've been a great power through Lake Curry since 1990. I worked with Ravi Manga, the engineer of the council, to um, find a community waste water system. I presented the concept that I picked up at the conference. I introduced Ravi to environmental technologies, a firm based in the hut, and uh, they uh, assisted in the planning for the installation of the system, which is now in place and has been in place since about 2005 or something like that, at the top of the hill. A good system, as you've probably seen in the uh, recent reports, uh, what they call ultra you know, treatment, uh, good stuff. The Biodiversity Group, with whom I've been a founding member, we approached council and council provided the plantings for the wetland there, and the Biodiversity Group planted it. We're very aware of the reticulation system on the ground. I try to keep an eye on the breathers at each end of the line, occasionally the sheep knock them over and so forth, and we advise the, the farmer and the council and things of that sort. I have been down there with um, Senior Council staff on occasion where they introduced, uh, where they met with the resident of the Rate Pass Association of Lake Berry, who at one stage I was president, they had a lot of interest, of course, in this facility. 
the enterprise system was put in was planned for the single say the equivalent of 200 households, that particular one. Um, not quite sure, I don't think the hotel fitted into that. There was a separate arrangement necessary, apparently. And my property was to have one of the transfer, one of the pump stations, PS1, I think it's number, I don't know, number one anyway, uh, that probably services over half the village. But the intention is that we'll deal with the uh, subdivision, which had been well and truly approved by that stage. But the subdivision, a subdivision was originally approved by the previous owners, the Todd family. I bought out the Todd property, which is in those days 19 acres, and uh, have been developing the property in behalf of the family trust ever since. So um, we've always kept an in interest um, in the uh, interflow system and its effectiveness and so forth. Earlier this year, I actually asked council uh, staff for a report on the performance of the system. Uh, they could not provide reports on the performance of the system up on the hill. They were able to give me a couple of sheets of paper for two months, alleged readings of the power station on my land, on our land. So I was becoming concerned. And um, fortunately, I ran, when uh, Wetting the Water took over, I ran into their uh, uh, local person on site and we had a good discussion and he agreed with me that the tank top on the pump station was not as per specification. The work had not been completed on the tank. I'd become aware of that by odour coming off the system in the height of summer over the last few years as numbers of creatures begin to build up in the village. So, uh, when it to go. So it's a joint venture concept now. We're putting a road in it. Council is now having, going to have the road vested in them when it is in. We've got the community, Lake Ferry community system in place. Um, and I'm very encouraged that we can work together as a joint venture partnership with council to finish this off and get the job done. We've actually got people lined up to buy into those properties, the stage one is fully under additional contract. I might not do any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Perry. Uh, <coughs> um, we will be touching on the uh, Lake Ferry uh, wastewater system later on, but I guess um, we can, uh, for you and Harry, we can talk about how we can work with them. Uh, that's time's up. What do I do? Oh, good. Sorry. Um, yeah, Harry, do you think? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking about the actual uh, performance of the um, particular system later in the report, but um, obviously we'd want to work with the community and uh, people to, um, so everyone understands what's happening, what's going on. Um, and use local knowledge where we can. Well, thank you for that. Uh, so, Mr. Chief, that's a couple of questions. Yeah, I, I would appreciate the opportunity to, to be informed at a later date on the progress. Perry, thanks for that. Um, just quickly, um, you said 200. Um, it's designed for 200. Yeah. What's the subdivision going to bring it up to? Um, Uh, and, well, probably you would know how many households are there at the moment. I wouldn't say there's more than about 15. I don't know. Uh, 14 house properties in stage one, which is all under contract. And there's a prospect of anywhere from another 15 to 20 odd. So that's uh, each case. Well, I think the maximum analysis that you'd be striking to get to a hundred. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Actions from public participation. We'll be discussing the um, Lake Ferry wastewater uh, later on in the uh, on the agenda. So, uh, have we any extraordinary business? No. Right. Minutes from the uh, previous assets and services committee. Would someone like to move that we receive these, please? Master and. 
Is there any corrections or discussions around that? No? Um, yes, I did read that. <laughs> and, <clears throat> yep, I'm happy with that they are a true and correct record. So, um, we can sign it off. So, right. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on. We are into the B category. Information and verbal reports from Chief Executive and Staff First. We'll start off with B1, which is the Partnership and Operations Report. If someone would like to move, <coughs> uh, Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to move the briefly re-emphasize that um, the structure of the report is the written verbal report on a couple of key items and then uh, the appendix there are a number of uh, dashboards around particular uh, projects um, just to highlight that again. Um, there is the uh, Williams Water uh, Forms Report at Appendix Order of the um, Partnerships and Operations Report and if committee members are happy with maybe if there's any particular questions around that performance report, we wait till we have the room for guys yep. here to, to discuss those in detail, if that's yep. acceptable. Happy with that, guys? Yep. Yeah, right. Thank you. Um, it's just highlight a couple of other key points. Um, <coughs> there's obviously the blockage of the uh, wastewater uh, main in Featherston, which has uh, been going on for a while, um, but has been managed properly, so it hasn't had any impact on level of service or any environmental impacts. And the final repair was uh, completed on the 24th and 25th of October. Um, uh, a couple of comms concerns around uh, how we uh, communicate that out to the community. Um, so they have been uh, noted by Wellington Water and uh, there'll be uh, looking for improvements on the, uh, the way we communicate that, that kind of activity again, um, but also how we uh, manage it then within council and make sure that people are aware of the impact on one parking space, um, although it was over at the uh, Labour weekend. So we're looking to improve some of those uh, processes as we move forward. Um, quickly run through a couple of other points, uh, as has been noted in the Water Race Committee, uh, Land Water have assumed responsibility for the uh, management of our water races. Uh, process is in place in that and seems to be working quite well. The water reform continues. We have, uh, actually it's not part of the report, but we have signed an updated funding agreement and delivery plan and that's been submitted on time to DIA. Um, so that work will be kicking off very soon in terms of actually implementing some of the um, work within the delivery plan. One of the other uh, issues that was raised at uh, previous meeting and um, was around the um, uh, training and qualifications of the road water uh, treatment operation staff. And there's a table there that outlines what that level is um, and then future plans for uh, further development and training. Um, it's just to say, in personal experience, Mountain Water are quite keen to develop and improve their staff and that's also their work in progress from uh, the start point that they inherited. Please jump in if there's any no, oh, well, can I, yeah, yeah. Can I just, <laughs> Sorry, I'll just have a uh, uh, Just going back to page five with the uh, qualifications. Yeah. Um, looking at that, there's only actually one person with any qualification in wastewater management or operations, and I'm wondering whether that's in fact impinged to some extent on the problems down at Lake Ferry, because you see this as I say, there's only one person with any uh, formal certificate in wastewater. Yeah, I think that was part of the discussion on the late very Thank you. That'd be, that'd be good. Uh, yeah, you sorry, just here, right? Yeah, no. Yeah. Water races. Um, I don't recall seeing anything in the in the documents um, about Wellington Water taking over water races. Uh, it's not part of three waters. It's a separate issue. Um, how has that come about without it actually going? Did it go through council? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I don't recall. Yeah. Yes, it Obviously, before our time. <coughs> no. no. And it went through the water race subcommittee. Through the water race subcommittee that came to us when we put it to council. Yeah. 
council or reading anything about them taking operations. But so I mean, the decision the decision that water races would go into Wellington Waters purview was made at the same time as the decision to make um, to go with um, Wellington Water, and that was was before this council. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that that decision was made. Yeah. Um, what we did agree was a um, a trend, uh, was initially going to happen at that time. So um, first of October when we took over Wellington Water, but we gave it 12 months. So we could get, um, basically get our own house in order around setting up the advisory and getting really things going. So it was delayed for 12 months before they took over. And so this, that was the date, um, a year subsequent to Wellington Water taking over. Ross, did you oh, carry on? Yeah, so um, there's also quite a bit of, um, uh, Water projects and water papers subsequent to, to this report uh, that will pick up in uh, making the agenda. Okay. Uh, land transport, a bit of an outline of, of activity completed uh, there. Obviously, we're starting to move into the um, resale season, um, and that's on track and is anticipated to be completed by the end of the month. Uh, there was obviously quite a bit of uh, uh, wind damage um, around the place <laughs> a few weeks ago, um, and we've been uh, dealing with that with the property as well. Uh, you and I was just going to ask um, about the uh, Johnson's Hill application and the geotechnical report, but more particularly the flyover with the drone. He showed me some of the photos, and I'm just wondering at some stage whether councillors can see the extent of the erosion. It's actually, uh, until you see it on that map, you don't realise how much erosion has gone on in time. So we do have that, and we have the final um, report. We're providing with a draft report and providing feedback to focus on that. We have the um, final report, but it was uh, too late to get into the agenda, and so we'll be discussing that at the next meeting. But yes. um, I guess a verbal update, it is quite stark. If you look at the map, what the action is, is map it out and then draw uh, or identify on that map um, where the coast used to be, where it is now, and this progressive erosion over the number of years. So it is um, quite substantial. It's going to be a major issue for us, obviously, um, in, in the future. And we'll be sharing that. So, thank you. Uh, and we'll also be touching, I guess, on that um, the subsequent paper and the use of uh, alternative solution to mitigate the, the um, coastal erosion there as well. Um, the trial around Eco Reef will pick that up as a discussion of yeah. paper as well. Yeah. Um, housing for seniors, unless there's any questions around the voting report. Um, housing for seniors, we're obviously carrying on with the programme of work there, uh, which is uh, nearing completion. Uh, Payne Farm, again, so will be aware of the extensive amount of work that's gone on there over the last uh, six months or so, probably, probably even longer. Um, it, the main household is tenanted and there has been work also done on the separate cottage there as well. So again, they've got an extensive amount of investment in there as well, which is um, which is good. And yeah, lots of work on playgrounds and, and park benches and, and tidying up some of the cemeteries through the year as well. So there's been uh, an awful lot of work conducted with amenities teams over the last six months to get uh, all the park reserves that have been really nice to come in the spring and summer. You have, have compliments on that work. Um, Council was a bit of a surprise to me actually, but um, <laughs> and we could have had some um, a little bit of um, fanfare and yes. trumpet playing beforehand. But okay, but it, it is it is appreciated despite the the odd too much of the comment around social media. Um, very good to see. Thank you. Thank you. I was there any particular questions around the um, amenities report? There's quite a lot of pictures there around some of the yeah. stuff that the guys been doing. No, I'm, I'm, with, uh, I'm with Ross on this. I have a few favourable comments and uh, I'll may it continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just open. And uh, yeah, it's really great to get the, uh, the stand to figure the great on swimming pool as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. coming into a new season. Um, yeah. With the uh, swimming season due to the end of the month again. So we're opening the pool to the end of the month. So get that in place is great. I do, I do know this is different from Great Hand here. So, uh, well, on their behalf, thank you for doing that. That's really cool. Yeah. And also for the provision of um, steps for our senior people who get in and out of the pool so they don't make it much more. Yeah. Yeah. 
really useful message for town. One of the um, areas I'd probably just like to highlight is the uh, delivery of projects using funding from the Provincial Growth Fund. It's at the bottom of page 12. There's quite a list there. Um, we have been cracking on as, as we do. Uh, the, the works at uh, Anzac Hall and Featherston are nearly complete and probably complete in the next two weeks. Um, there has been uh, quite a lot of work preparatory work done at the um, Featherston War Memorial. The work has started there to, to look at that and um, how we can strengthen and the World Memorial there. The plan is to have that work completed uh, well in advance of NZAC Day. But it is quite an important question. Are, are we able to put some extra lights in there or is it determined by heritage? Uh, Maybe it's partly determined by heritage, but I can certainly ask. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be, yeah. It's uh, quite a strong movement in town. Eh? Yeah. They really like it and it was quite dull, but maybe because the, uh, it was a bit of a need uh, to repair. So. When we do something around it rather than building yeah, yeah, yeah. itself, we um, might be able to look at this. Thank you. <clears throat> um, and yeah, we'll carry on works with the uh, in conjunction with the community centre. And I guess the, the two other, that's why we've raised this uh, project. We'll work with Harry Kimurai on their project, so that's quite an extensive um, program of work. And we had uh, members of staff from PGF and uh, come over yesterday to review those projects. and. Um, yeah, they were really keen, enthusiastic, and happy with the progress that were made. So it's quite encouraging for us. Um, and that includes the, the cycle bridge we went to earlier yeah. as well. So it's taken up quite a bit of time, but it's well worth doing to provide some good facilities for, for repairs. Uh, we have the uh, library services report there as well. Um, there's an update on on this piece is there in terms of usage. Um, I, misread the report, so the, the green line is this year. I didn't quite appreciate that, so uh, just to highlight the fact that uh, the green line is this year, not so well, part of last year, maybe that's yeah. just me. Um, yeah, usage of libraries is, is continuing to be quite high, um, which is really encouraging, um, and we have a new, or relatively new member of staff that's taken on the uh, Women's Library Services across Carson and South Barrett as well. So, um, Progress. Um, so, Ewan, um, can you pass on my thanks to our library staff? I think they did a superb job. Part of it, um, the um, new users <coughs> drop off, I think, is probably something to do more with the, the anxiety levels across the country because when you look at that compared to the ebook checkout, yeah. our ebook checkout is way up. Yeah. So, uh, I, I wouldn't read too much on but I think our library staff are, are doing a superb job and really working hard to keep the community engaged. And every time I go into the library, I think. It's a fantastic facility. We have done, um, yeah, <coughs> since we're working again, um, we've been successful getting uh, funding to um, run a series of programs uh, across the libraries. I think that came up on page 16, where we are looking to do some development work around how we provide services, what services we provide through the libraries. Um, that's been funded by uh, the National Library. So we have managed to screw some funding across both Carson and South Wire, but to um, to progress those initiatives. Mm. Can I just ask my libraries, are we still pursuing discussions with Masterton about making it a true wire for library service across the board? Um, it's uh, certainly, and with Annette coming on board, um, she works very closely with Corin, who's the uh, Masterton lead as well. I'm not sure what the plan is for the future on that one, to be fair, um, but it's certainly something that's not Possible list, I guess. Um, yep, um, I said we'll maybe uh, pick up the rental order and yes. report once, uh, once we have those guys there. Um, just quickly, I've got to scroll through a few pages now, bear with me. Um, is there any questions around the, the dashboard reports? Um, uh, it took me a little bit of time to get my head around it. Okay. Um, but once I did and could understand it, yeah, no, I think it's great. So, um, yeah, I guess the, the, the amenities one, there are a couple of uh, red flags there. That's where we were unsuccessful in getting funding from the PGF, um, particularly around the Peace Garden and at the Phillipson Stadium. Um, yeah, we, we don't have 20% of that, but we are continuing with the Naui um, septic system. Yeah, it's obviously ongoing on that one. Um, that was already funded, but we did apply to PGF to get different funding for that, but we're unsuccessful there, we already had separate work for that. 
I think we were quite successful at getting some of the other funding. Mm. So. Yeah. Well, good. Any questions around the, the dashboard system? We'll bring up the other one. Well, yes, the water, the water, the, 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 the water stuff. Yep. Yep. Uh, we can bring up this. <clears throat> no, well done. Um, I, I've got one question regarding seal grade resurfacing. Um, just uh, there have been a couple of comments, um, and it may be a perceived as opposed to a real problem that um, some roads that don't need resurfacing have been resurfaced. And just with a future meeting, we could have clarity on how we assess whether, whether it's scheduled as opposed to need uh, resurfacing that's occurring. Yeah, I, I guess my comment would be there's um, more taken into account than just the visual appearance. So, we'll also remember the public may see the yeah. appearance of the, the radiations under the surface. So, actually, it's part of that. It's also not um, just the appearance of the road, it's the skid, um, skid resistance. Yeah. So, the, um, and that's something that's not visible. Um, so people look at it and think, well, the road's fine, but actually the, the chip is classified and it's, um, it, in other words, it, it creates safety risk. Yeah. So part of the assessment is, um, which is not visual, is also to do with its um, skid resistance, because um, as I said, chip classifies. So part of the reseal is to do just that. But NZTA do the uh, survey of the roads. Scrum assessment, yes. sideways coefficient roading index. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. Need yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, you have one of those? <laughs> yeah, we'll get back to you if we. That's right, that's right. I, yeah. I, should, I should also say, actually, on the resurfacing, we have deferred a couple of the works that are listed in the program there, um, and that gives allowance for us to complete the um, Hawaiian wastewater um, upgrade. So we're not going to be resurfacing the road and then picking it up to do the pipes we have deferred. Yeah, Papawai, Fraser's Road, Tilson's Road, and something else as well, just to make sure we're not doing it twice. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Ross, Ross, Gary. I'm happy. All happy? Yeah, I'll, look, I like the way you present it. It's instant, instant things to go focus on that. It's not in my life. Go, go, go. Yeah, it's a red, red, yellow. Yeah, yeah. 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 works well. No, well done. Thank you. Right, if there's no more questions around that, we shall move on to the <coughs> uh, B2. And we're asked to receive the Lake Ferry Wastewater Insider Report. Uh, so, that's, so, Mr. Chair, before we go there, um, we've got still part of this process is the um, Wellington Water Performance Report. Do we want to talk? To the Wellington Water staff about that before we move on to the, the general. Well, yep. whichever yep. works. I mean, well, we should, yeah, yep. come up, uh, guys. Because so, yep. it's in the it's a US report, so yep. 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 Well, uh, Morena, it's, uh, my name is Colin Crampton, I'm the Chief Executive of and we've got um, Jeremy Gibbon, who's our Relationship Manager with uh, the South Wairarapa District Council, Ian McSherry, who's the previous Relationship Manager, we've got a, um, Stephen Wright, who's looking after the Featherston Wastewater Treatment Project, yep. Um, and Linda is part of that team. I'll just should change seats. Um, and Alex is our strategic relationships manager. So um, we've all hopped over the hill this morning. So that's good. Thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah. the only thing we did have in our mind, Chair, was we, we thought we wouldn't mind just, um, just after you've done the um, performance report, is just talk to you a little bit around how we go about um, cost estimation in a generic sense before we address that as some of the individual projects, if that would be okay. Yep, right. We're just a bit unsure about how to get that particular slide in front of everyone. We were thinking that maybe we were on there, but is there a way of um, we could email that to people? Yeah, no, Sorry? I can send it to you. Yeah, no, can, we, can we get it across there to you? And yeah, you and has it. Yeah. Is that all right, Ewan? Oh, I'll set it on, see what we can do with it. Yeah, all right, but in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think um, 
we're just happy to uh, talk about the quarter one performance report. I mean, it's a, gen it's a generic report we send out to all our owners at the end of uh, quarter one. Yep. Tries to give you a bit of an understanding of the issues that the whole company is facing. Uh, we obviously go through the individual uh, detail of the report with you and, um, and Harry at a particular level, and we're, but we're happy to address any of the issues in there. But now, so since you brought it up, you can start. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so when when you came over the other day, we talked about um, advice, and um, so and, and you're creating value. The long term plan discussion cycle is the part that I've been focused in, on, and in terms of advice to us as council. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, um, and I raised it there that we need to have. Um, Better advice and more options presented to us. It's not a. It's not a matter of saying this is going to cost more because it's saying doing things the same way. We can. We all know that the environment is changing, mm -hmm. so the way we have done things in the past is not going to be suitable for the way we will do things in the future. And so, as our trusted advisor, trusted advisor mm -hmm. uh, I'm not comfortable that I'm getting advice from you that takes that into consideration. And when I look at the comment here. Um, it's, you know, the, this is helping councils focus their investment decision making and trade offs. It's not the advice we've got so far is not giving us that confidence. It's giving us anything but that confidence because you're not not thinking the future uh, and giving us the advice into the future about how we can fund these massive bills in the future. Yeah, well, I mean, it would be worth just um, running over that process for a bit. I mean, it's early days, isn't it? But the way the, the way we are designed, we're set up. Um, is the first thing we, you want us to do is to make sure we can you know, tell a system performance story on your assets. So when you are dealing with um, wastewater, um, for example, you know, we've got to understand you know, what the long run outcomes are for wastewater and then translate that into action in each of your plants. So you know, we've got to be able to pitch that story to your will so that you can understand what you're chasing. The second issue we do is when we come to the long-term plan, we've got to take that um, system thinking and then put it into the issues and options that you have in front of you when you're looking at your long-term plan. And as I understand, we came last week and started to lay out the options. Now, when we say it's options, we, you know, we've moved away in this LTP because three years ago with our owners, you weren't an owner at that stage over the hill. We were required to give you advice within your existing their advice over the hill within the existing funding levels that they've run from year to year, which was clearly not going to present a sustainable picture for three waters. So this time around in the LTP, we're really clear to owners that we will give you unconstrained advice around what you need to do to invest to meet those outcomes. Now, clearly though, you, you know that that has to be nestled against the affordability of all of that work. And so, you know, as in terms of what we delivered last week to you, there's a conversation necessary to say, well, where's your priority? Where do you want to invest? And when you finally um, decide what, what level of funding you want, we want to optimize um, that advice inside that envelope. Now, to me, that's the, that's the biggest value for money step we can give you, is to give you the best way to spend your limited resources. And then the last thing we do is try and um, deliver your value for money at every level inside the way you work. Um, I think there's two parts to what you've just said. The first is the here and now, yep. looking after the assets here yep. and now, what we've got. Yep. Okay. Let's just park that to one side mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. because we know we have to spend money on yep. maintaining whilst we make decisions about the future. Yep. Yep. What I'm really concerned about is the advice we're getting from the future. What is the future going to look like? I'm not a water expert in any shape, way or form. You guys are supposed to be our experts and you need to be telling us and saying, what we're doing now, discharging to land, discharging to water, it's not going to be acceptable. We all know that. The government is saying, stop this. Mm. Um, right? So when you come up with a long-term plan advice for us that says invest $37 million into this, whatever, and so on and so forth, with no conversation around, is this taking us the next step in technology? Is this taking us the next step in innovation? Is this going to be useful for us for the next 30 years. Okay, okay, well there is nothing there. And, and Ian and I have spoken about this a number of times. And what <coughs> I really want to see, and I'm sure everyone else around wants to see, is real detailed advice that we can make decisions on that are going to impact our community for 20 or 30 years. 
not more of the same, because more of the same is not going to be, within five years, we're going to lose the right to discharge as we do now, probably. You know, okay, the, well, tea leaves, um, the tea leaves are heading that way, aren't they? Yeah. Well, we can, um, we can provide, you know, thanks for the feedback. We'll, we'll do what, what we can when we have further conversations with the LTP. But we've got to also have time to understand, you know, the system you operate and, and, and how it does it and what we need to do to provide you. It's taken us three years to get on top of it over the hill over there. I guess we'll do that a bit quicker. We've been, been in the box seat only just one year so far. Oh, I completely appreciate that. So, so we can definitely sharpen the advice um, to you to get a better feel for what you should be doing as we work through the LTP, but we're not going to know everything. We can only know what we've uncovered to date, but we're certainly clear around what you know what what, what we want to do around um, you know the, the health and welfare of your rivers and, and other you know other priorities that we've presented in your LTP. Oh, I, I am comfortable with the advice you give us on fresh water. Mm -hmm. I don't have that's not my issue here. My issue is wastewater, mm -hmm. and I just right now I don't have the confidence that I'm getting the advice. And I don't know how the others feel, but I don't. I don't feel we're getting the advice from council to make good decisions. Are you going to future? Is that about particularly the Featherstone plant? No, it's it's, it's it's the whole thing, you know, because we know that Featherstone is the here and now, and we know we've got an issue with the Featherstone plant. But we know that our consent at Greytown sometime in the next uh, couple minutes, when Greytown come up again, yeah, okay, no, consent, and so on. Yeah, so no, you know, we, we need to be making decisions now in our long term plan. <laughs> And in, our, and in our spatial plan that are going to be 30 years. Now, our current plants aren't going to be operating as they are here and now for 30 years. So we need to be saying this. Yeah. Okay, but look, I, 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 all I can say is that, you know, there's a great comment to receive and, and thanks, we need to just digest it. But the, the way I feel at the moment, um, we're, we're trying to engage with you on what the future will like on the Featherston plant. That's the way of you know, how we're going to decide on the future. On the other plants, we're, we're going to talk to you a little bit about it today. We're trying to stabilise their performance and then understand where they need to go into the future to, to meet your aspirations around how you want those plants to perform. And we're happy to chat to you about that. We just need some more time. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. could, could I have, I was reading your report and looking at your qualifications of the people who are working in the wine and other. Yes. You taking over responsibility or management of our assets here. How do you feel you've gone with a diametric change in scale and type of waste um, management? Because it's a very different ball game to um, some of the plants over in Wellington with your other um, councils. Do you feel with over the last year you've got to grips with how a small system, the needs of a small system, and ensuring we have the skill in the South Wild uh to understand them hitting the ground running. So, yeah, so we, we've focused our, um, our operators um, on training for the individual parts. I saw the, uh, the table there that looked at wastewater um, treatment qualifications. We've focused their training on the individual plants that you've got here in South Wairapa. So um, and in answer to your question, yeah, we've, we've brought them up to speed with what we see as being the requirements there. Um, and we do have a number of experts within the organisation um, that are able to provide that direction. The, 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 it's a, I mean, the, the, it goes back to the deal we did on the 1st of October, you know, doesn't it, around, um, you know, the, the exchange we had with the South Wairapa Council. I mean, I would reflect on it as a partnership between Wellington Water and South Wairapa District Council. I felt when we signed up the deal, we could learn from each other. And um, you know, we felt we could bring things um, from what we've done over the hill to you, and we felt we could learn stuff off you. Um, and I think you know we've we've gone about that diligently over the last twelve months. We've had a, you know, we've had a couple of whoopsies along the way that have sped up our learning curve. Um, but on balance, I think you know we're you know we're, we're we're tackling it with you know we're really proud of the way we're tackling it. Um, when it came to your question earlier about the wastewater treatment plant. Um, Capability, we've inherited that from the previous regime. Regime. What we want to do is um, build up that capability so you have it locally and you can deal with those issues. But you know that takes time. Um, but you know we, we want to do that for our water treatment plant people as well. In our mindset, you know we want to have a credible, um, qualified resource sitting in the wire wrapper managing your assets, backed by a critical mass of experts over the hill. That was the worst model. It just takes time to, to get there. And I, I, I think my overall comment is, 
um, I don't know how we would have fared if um, the new council hadn't come in and taken an investment approach. I mean, you know, you've, you've, you've taken an investment approach in these assets, you've de-risked them, and they're starting to, we're starting to feel a lot happier about the management. I mean, if you hadn't done that, I think we would have been um, feeling distinctly uncomfortable about now. Yeah, it wasn't a criticism, it was just mm. how you're feeling yep. with regards to your yep. capability yep. and the management that you've got it under control now. Well, I think we, we have, and um, you know, I feel we're on the way to getting it under control. And you know, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to let you know any other than there's a lot of people who put a tremendous amount of effort into this, um, into this particular area. And, but that's why, that's why you did the deal with us. You know, you you wanted the energy and effort of a big organisation to come in and try and straighten these issues out. And I feel we've done that. Uh, well, as you also like to take this opportunity to compliment you on your transparency. Yeah. with regards to we're not hiding any discharges or issues that are there are reported. Mm. I think that's really important yeah. that, um, that we're getting a, a true picture of the issues. Yeah, you, you don't think I said, I do think we've already built capability over the last 12 months you know, to where we were at on the 1st of October last year. You know, we set up with two operators across the system that we inherited across, but you know, and now we've got more capability and we've also got people wrapped around them as well that are giving good support and advice from our home base, which I think you know is really helping on, on the back of those couple of whoopsies you know, if that makes sense. We're in a significantly better place than we were this time last year. What are your challenges working in the South Wairapa at a distance from your normal previous shareholders, high shareholders over the hill? Well the biggest you know the biggest problem is having um, you know, on the ground capability, who can look across all the issues and resolve them quickly without them escalating, you know, to, because we're at distance, you know, the more we can resolve locally and get on top of issues and make good decisions, the better off we are. And so if we end up with a lot of issues, smaller issues getting escalated over the hill, then by that time, you, you know, you might've lost a bit of confidence in what we're doing and why we might solve them. It would have been a lot better if we'd you know, had the right people tackling them earlier, but we're learning how to manage from distance. We're just talking to Harry and Ewan this morning about a couple of ideas we've got to try and um, work, that, work that better. And um, one of them we've implemented, I don't know if Harry's explained to you, is that, you know, on, on customer calls, we, you know, we, we, we're we running at 85%, um, you know, um, satis customer satisfaction on call pack. Um, so the, the general routine stuff are done really well, but when you get to some of the issues that are more complex, um, we end up spinning those out longer than we'd like. So we just put in place a couple of um, senior people whose sole job is to case manage those complex issues to try and bring them to ground earlier. So that's a good example. But we also have issues around, you know, our advice on land development, you know, managing projects and things that are just, you know, be nice to be able to, you know, to get on top of the issues locally faster. Do you know what I mean? Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, just go. Uh, <coughs> Um, thank you. Just to go back to the comment on the qualifications of operators, yep. I, I've just reinforced my point. There's only one person who actually holds any qualifications in wastewater. Yeah, and that's what you had before we took over, right? So they're exactly oh, the same. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. But these, these people, these people... The of the consent, we actually have qualified people operating. Yeah, so, so when we, when we um, took over on the 1st of October, we had to gather up the resources that you had in place before. Um, that you know, with through city care and you know locally, and we grabbed all those people. We've employed some new people, and now we're on the we're on the train them up track. So um, if we're deficient, we'll have to get them as trained up as quick as possible. And we're on to it. Yeah, it's been a year. The qualifications take significantly longer than a year. But yeah, yeah. sorry, the qualifications take significantly longer than a year. So, yeah, I just knew, you know, looking at that, it's a bit scary. It's, there's only one person who actually... It's well, that, the only other thing I would say is that, you know, we've, we've, you, you do have... Um, what that doesn't show you is the qualifications and experience of the people who are managing those staff. Yeah. So we should yeah. we should put that on yeah, the side. I, I look at that and I read the account of what happened at Lake Ferry and it's really scary. Yeah, well, I think we, you know, we maybe we just need to reissue that diagram with the... Because with, it's not yeah. reflecting the, the management team that look after those sites either. It would help. Yeah. Uh, taking Alice's point about um, the the consultation thing really worries me too because it's, it's going through we're looking at we take the better than one. Um, we talk about consultation with a council update. Now that hasn't happened, and I'm just wondering if we are using different definitions of council. Well, I think so when you say a council update, does that mean 
council officers, not council members, because you went to a consultation with the community before talking to council, and it looks like we're planning to have a consultation with the community uh, best way to answer in a couple of weeks' time. Once again, once Go again, ahead. without sorry, without council being briefed on what was going through there, and that sort of reflects back on my concerns. Um, that when we look at the, for example, we've had no chance to talk about the Papawai situation. We're just told it's going to cost somewhere between 1.8 and 2.9 million, and that price has gone up very rapidly. I'd like to just ask your guys, um, what are we actually doing at Papawai? I'm told. It's on it's there. On there. It's on there. Uh, no, it's not. It doesn't say what we're actually doing at Papawai. It's still yeah. increasing we address, capability. We can address that as we, um, as we go through. We're Sorry, I just, what I'm saying is the consultation is missing. I think it would really help. If we have a situation where we could actually, the council members, <coughs> council members, because we're the ones who actually are out there taking the flag for can, what's going on. Can, can, we, we've got a presentation on that coming um, up. Yes, okay. The, uh, sorry, Stephen, 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 just a minute. I want to make sure we've got the order right. Sorry, do you mind? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fantastic feedback. Thanks very much. We we're, we're really hard to fix that. I just want to make sure we've got ourselves organised to go through these subjects in order. Yes, so yes, I agree, I agree totally. We, 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 we might as well start with the Featherston Wastewater Treatment Plant, yep. do you think? Yep. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Because yep. we, we've got Stephen here. Yep. Before I did that, Chair, I would like us to just talk about the way we um, cost estimate projects, yes. just because it, it affects Featherston, it affects the capital projects, yep. everything we're going to talk about today. So. I think Stephen was going to run through that. Would the people on the Zoom be able to see that right? Yep. So Stephen, you're going to go? Pam, Pam, you're okay? Can you see that? Yep. And, and, this, and this, this came out of a, this came out of um, the last, uh, um, this came out of the last three years of, a, of work over the hill where we were continually getting ourselves into trouble. Bring the, bring the chip up on the table there. And, you know, we're getting ourselves into trouble around you know, to what degree were we backing the original message to put in the LTP? So we just wanted to take it through. Okay, so this, this um, diagram here demonstrates the process, the cost system I think the Wellington Board has introduced. Notoriously, when people put cost estimates together well in advance of the actual project being needed or, or being developed, the, this they're not putting the, 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 the prices are consistently incorrect, and, and that, that is driven by a number of factors. A, a lot of it's around scope. You know, when, when people are thinking of a water treatment plant, what is the scope? And, and it's not until you do the work to actually understand the, the scope, you really don't have, a, you can't really put an accurate number to it. There's also when projects initially kick off, it's well known there's a lot of optimism bias. And particularly engineers, yeah, we want to get on, we want to build it. That optimism bias um, overseas is really some like 60% influence on the price because people get so enthusiastic on the building. So you've got to offset all the facts early on. You don't know what the full scope is. You don't know, you know, you've got to remove that bias you might have towards building something. So what Wellington Water has introduced is this contingency and funding risk model. It's um, something we've, we've adopted, it's used by NZTA successfully, and we've adopted a similar methodology. Was as you develop the project, as you get more information, so you can reduce the level of contingency and funding risk, you build into your price. Inevitably, during the development of a project, there's lots of things you don't know when you start. And as you start to find out more information, you building or designing it, developing it, things come out of the world you haven't thought about. So we've got to allow for both those risks that you know about and the other things that you don't know about. So that's what we call our contingency and funding risk that we add on to prices. So in, in the development of a project, I um, want to go through these stages of, you know, in, there's a needs early on, investigation, at the bottom of those boxes, at the bottom of op options assessment, perimeter design, detail design, procurement and construction, all the stages that we follow to develop projects. If you take the first one at the moment, we're still in, in the options assessment, we're way down the, the list of where we are in terms of our knowledge and our ability to provide an accurate price. So at these stages, we have to build in contingency and funding risk. And at the moment, we put about 100% on projects at an early stage for funding and um, for funding risk and contingency on those projects. 
And we've actually been looking at a number of projects that we've inherited historically that we're now getting to the end of, and we're finding that number is about right. But the original numbers that people have thought about the cost of projects is just way out because they haven't given due consideration to all the issues that you need to include, the full scope, all the geotechnical, all the underground, all those things that you don't think about with enough detail. And what we do with the mining tools now, as we progress through those design phases, we, we reduce the amount of contingency and funding risk because we know more as we progress, so we can reduce the amount of additional money we need to build in to provide us with that confidence around our price. And we have a, a clear, we have an estimating manual, and it defines at each stage the amount of detail you need to produce. So early on, you, you don't have a, you, you're, you're working on a parametric level, so when you're building, as say, we'll take a treatment, a, a water reservoir to start with, you go look at similar reservoirs around the country and so on average a reservoir of this size costs this much. That's how you tend to price it at an early stage. You don't go down and add up all the nuts and bolts washes because you don't know what how many nuts and bolts and washes you need. So you do it at a very high level. But when you're doing it at that high level, you need to put a big contingency on it because though your particular reservoir might have lots of things that you haven't thought about at that stage. And what we do now is we progress and we get more detail, so we require more accuracy or we, we develop more detail. So we would get to detail design and then we actually produce a schedule of quantities. You know, we have quantities are all defined. We can actually put rents against all the actual quantities to come off the job. But there's still a risk because even at detail design stage, we don't know what the price is going to be exactly. If you go to contractors, contractors have a, have a detailed design and they're scheduled a price, even contractors can't get it right because a number of times they will go over price or under price. So, Got to build these funding and contingency risks all the way through. And what we're doing now, we're into work with, we're playing catch up. So we're taking all this historic information that we've been given um, with, through councils and adding those contingencies and, and gradually getting those numbers up to where they actually need to be. So in your in your LTP this year, we, we've got to be really clear to you, you as councillors and officers about <coughs> where uh, projects that are locked in your LTP that are in those early two stages, yeah. where they're only a holding pattern around roughly what we think it is versus being a true estimate of the work we're going to do and you can hold us to our performance. And so if you just, as an introduction to your Featherston Wastewater Treatment Plant, we don't know what the technology is or the option that we're going to select together. So at the moment, the number we put in there is just an indication of the fact you've got a problem and you need to do it. Over the next, whatever, how long are you going to take, Stephen? By the time you get through all of this process, we'll be able to put a firm estimate on the table around the true cost of that plant. So this is where, you know, we've got to understand when you're dealing with those issues, whether they are a generalised assumption around the problem definition, or they're actually a fixed estimate around the thing we're going to implement. Does that help? Yeah. That's, I, I have spoken. <coughs> yeah. Harry, uh, yeah. question for you, Harry. This, this is quite difficult from an um, annual plan process, isn't it, where you potentially have quite massive allowances and reserves for something that may not occur. Oh, yeah, I mean, and that's why councils traditionally avoid this type of costing model, and this is a good costing model. Yes. Uh, and I, I mean, I'll make it really concrete. Um, you take the manganese plant. So um, our LTP estimate um, was 460,000. I mean, I, I, you couldn't, there's no way in Hades, and in fact, in fairness, um, there's a crossover in the um, So one figure was 463, it should have been about a million because it was going to be carried over into the LTP. So the original council estimates were about a million. Right? Um, and it, there's just no way in Hades um, that you would ever build a manganese plant for that amount of money. Um, but the pressure was on to, and the pressure is always to try and keep the costs, exactly your comment, Mr. Mayor, that. Um, to put it out to the public, you're trying to drive the cost down. You're trying to take this curve and, and um, flatten it, you know, which is a wrong thing to do. Um, because history is littered with um, local government underestimating its costs um, and not actually, and then, then over, I mean, the perception of overspending. And it's not overspending, it's actually under budgeting, you know, which is the problem. And the problem with these kind of things is you don't get the certainty until you actually do your detailed design. Really. That's where you start to get the super, more certainty in it. Because um, remember, the, um, the, the, when you're doing your original work at this end, this is exactly the same in right? um, and transport. This is, um, in fact, um, Colin, in 
the team did actually present this model to you. Remember very early on when we were doing our water um, workshop on water supply? That's right. Just to, to anchor that this is the kind of thinking that we need to be. Yeah, so, being so Harry, there's, you know, um, you don't want to be getting, we don't want to get too depressed with ourselves because our performance on the um, improvement of the safe drinking water projects we're doing for you, yeah. you wanted them to be invested, you wanted them to be fixed. We didn't yeah. know all the scope, so we gave you a range of between 2.8 and 5.6 million before we started. Yeah. The current range um, heading towards completion is 3.6 to 4.3. So the range is getting lower, but it's wholly within the range we gave you at the beginning. Yes. And so therefore you'd look back on that as being good practice around yep. going faster than you probably want to to understand the true cost. So we ranged it, but everybody's really clear around what the worst case could be and what the minimum is, and we've largely kept it within it. So it's a good practice from our point of view. You, you will apply this practice to yep. all the scenarios that you're going to look at. Yep. For further some ways for it. So, yep. so further then is, is in the options assessment. So the, at the end of this piece of work, which we're taking until next June, yep. we come and we've got an agreement over the solution, we put a price to it. That would be a level two estimate that we provide at that time. Okay, Gareth and then Alison. Yeah, can I just, just make the comment that the, the, the point you're missing here is the credibility. The credibility of this organisation and the credibility of the elected members. We get figures which we're given. In good faith, and I accept that. And then we turn around, and then, you know, two weeks later, it goes up by a million dollars. In terms of credibility, that makes us look absolutely ridiculous. And we have to go back and talk to our ratepayers. The credibility of the of your estimate on Featherston at 37 million, it's mind boggling. And we are sitting here saying, okay, we're elected people, and we're talking to our ratepayers and saying, our, our advisors are saying we should be looking at 37 million, and that is the problem with the sort of approach. Well, you did. I don't know what the solution is. But but it's, it's, it's therein lies the, the problem. Exactly. Because, I mean, history is littered with um, council, councils across New Zealand constantly underestimating the capital costs of projects. So, um, what we're trying to, what is trying to be explained here is just this is the methodology that uh, is being used that means actually you've got to put in a high level. Estimate. I accept that. If you want to get certainty at the other end of the pipe, rather than <coughs> just going the other way, is just unacceptable. Are we talking estimates or quotes here? We're talking estimates, estimates. all the yes. way through. So we actually haven't got a solid price on anything. You, you won't get a solid price until we go to tender. Okay, so that, that brings in my exact question. Yeah. Um, so just to finish around this one off. So at the moment, for further start at the moment, we're sitting at option value. So we've got well, no, no, you're not sitting. You're, you're, in, in, the, in, the, you're in the red right. zone. I'm sorry, I thought, I thought you said we're, 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 we're starting with assessment. Starting. Okay, so we're still talking 100% contingency. Well, you're on the we're, 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 we're on the We have We haven't got that. You're on no. We don't just have the West Minister. That is what we've always used as a historic project. We're into more than just not for a value yet at all. Okay, that's fine. It's been like saying, I want to do it until the house, we don't want to tell me how big it is, you know what? Yeah, completely. Okay, but my question is, and you just raised it when we go to tender. Tender is a fixed price, right? And so the what state? Sorry, what stage does tenders come in? So tenders here. Okay. okay. Tender stage is still going to have to sit on contingency as. Okay. Right. Quite happy with. That. <laughs> sorry, quite, quite happy with, with that. I understand the contingency. Clean that up after that morning tea. And we're looking at sort of seven and a half to ten percent contingency yes. somewhere there. Yeah. How do you explain then from one tender for the same thing to another tender on the same project, 33 to 40% increase? Which one are you referring to? No, the one on the other, which one's the one that's the Papaway, Papaway, for example. Okay, so, the, so this, this is a tender that we put out 14 months ago. It's now a million dollars more. Three months later, that's a 33, 35% increase. And it's yeah, it's not easy to explain. So the Pinot Grove and um, Tupperwire project, uh, when, when, we, when you asked us to partner up with the uh, South Wairaba District Council to, you know, to deliver the work, um, on, we, we took uh, the, the current budgets in your LTP on face value as being you know, relatively correct, right? Uh, well, not correct, it's, it's, an, it's something to work on that we could proceed. Yeah. In both of those, in both of those cases, we, we, we then realised that um, there wasn't enough work done on the scoping of those projects, uh, or 
um, you know, the risk we were carrying. And so we, we stopped both projects and we went and did a level four estimate, which is a, we went and de did a detailed design and understood the, you know, the true scope of it and the true problem we're trying to address and how we spend it. And then we've gone out to tender and they've roughly, you know, they've roughly been about where we estimated them to. So if you go back, if you go back and look at the history of those projects, I mean it started with the basis that when they were completed and you put them in your LTP, um, they were significantly underestimated. Um, and then since we've we've picked them up and taken them forward, uh, when we put them out to tender, we 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 you know I guess in hindsight, uh, we thought that the, the jobs needed to be done, so we we took the information we had. And we went out to tender, and when we got the tender, we realised that that wasn't the right, that wasn't the best thing to do, because those tenders were way bigger than we thought, and we couldn't justify value for money for it. So we've gone back in both cases, we've completed the level four estimate, and now we can stand in front of you and say, based on those level four estimates, we know the true scope and cost of the work, and when we've tendered it, we um, we can compare that to that estimate. Whereas before, you were basically doing a tender, and you don't you didn't know whether you were pricing under risk in the work. You didn't even know what the scope was. Um, you know, they were they were both they both deserve to be put right through an estimate process from the beginning. And if we had our time again, councillors, and we inherited those two projects, um, that was the very first thing we would have done. Okay, look, I, I, can, I can understand that, but it comes back to Collins. That's a Garrett's point about the communication with us. Pena Gray, absolutely, that was an estimate, and that's fine. You know, that's I'm not. Only concerns about that, but then the upper way was a tender and a new tender, hundred a million dollars more, without the background that you've just talked about. So in our papers, there's nothing about why it's gone up, where's the scope change, what 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 was done really poorly before. Because if I want to go out to the community and say this is why it's gone up, because what was done before uh, under the previous regime was bad, poor, and here's the reasons why. You can justify that, but if it just comes up and says there's a million dollars more from one tender to another with none of that background. Yeah. Well, that's what we have. We haven't been briefed on what's even happening in that one. I mean, I'd like to know which bit of pipe you're replacing. And, is it, and my real question on that one is, Colin, is it because the infrastructure requirements of Greytown have increased dramatically in the last six months, i.e., the new subdivisions? And therefore, did the previous council, in fact, not put enough pipes to start with? I mean, I don't know the answer to that. And I've never had an opportunity to ask that Unless, question. Yeah, yeah. I think the best thing we can do on Pukawai is um, just give you back a case study. Um, you know, write it up as quick as possible and send it out to you within a week. Yeah. Just go back through all those issues you've raised. But I can, I, I can take you through um, the, you know, the, 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 the issue around you know, value for money. So when, when that project was um, given to Higgins before, uh, you know, well into water's time, um, you know, it was a, in our minds, they, they, they did a decent job of estimating, you know, of pricing it for you at 1.9 million. The, the yeah. But because you would have been really at risk of major variations because it was a, it was a, it was a tender done between on a, of a rough scope of the project and they did their best to, to price that for you. But if you'd entered into that contract with them, there's no doubt in my mind, you would have been paying variations all over the place as you encountered risk. And so I think, you know, your staff did the right decision to not, um, in hindsight, not to award that tender because it would have been too risky. It was so, you didn't award it because you didn't have the money at the time, but you would certainly have been uh, at a risk if you had accepted the tender box provided that would not have been what you paid. Then when we when then when we went and um, tendered it, and, and Harriet I've talked about this morning, tendering it with, on that same basis was the, the smartest move by um, um, by um, us and um, South Wales Rapid District Council, and we got a three point six million dollar tender, you know, which was you know through our panel, and so is a is a decent estimate, and we should have confidence in it. But they argued was that they were pricing risk into it. You know, there was there was not enough design done. There was complexity inside the project. And so we said to your team, we should not proceed with that. And therefore we went back and we did a level four estimate. We've done the detailed design and we've got all the risks under control and we've put it back out. Um, the current estimate, as I understand it, is 2.7 million. Yeah. Um, and we've put it back out to the market and everything <coughs> we're getting from the, from the market is that that price will be less than 3.6 because um, we've de-risked it. Yeah. We've, de we've got it down. And so you're going to get good value for money on that tender. 
the problem you're going to have to get get past as a council is is we've got to when we explain that to our um, to your ratepayers, you are really getting a good value proposition here for what you're spending. Unfortunately, when you compare it to the um, you know the, the estimate given in the red. Um, was not a very well thought through process. It was well underestimated. But you, that doesn't mean you're not getting good value for money. No, I, I accept that. But, you know, like last week, we had a meeting of, of finance and audit, and we had a figure there of 2.8. Yep. Today, I've got a figure of 2.96 on the same job. Yeah, well, yeah, and I'm sitting here saying, so in one week, it's like by 100,000. No, the, the estimate hasn't changed. The level four estimate hasn't changed. The next thing we'll come and tell you about is whether the tender, what the tender price is. Right. You're always carrying risk between an estimate and what the, so, what the contract will give you. Yeah, so risk. both those figures probably, to my mind, have got a question mark. Yeah. My other question would be, in, in terms of the actual scope of the job, I understand it's to increase capability. Capacity. Capacity. Now, so what is the end result of that? We have a bigger pipe going into the pond unless, in unless, Greytown. Unless, what is the result to the Unless there's people Greytown. in this room who can answer that question, that technical question. Well, nobody's yeah. explained this to us. That's what I'm saying. In a week's time, we'll write you a note and explain the purpose of the job, exactly what we're doing, so you can understand. I, I guess where else uh, in Gareth are coming from, you know, this came to us and it was a big surprise. Had we been had uh, a discussion around how and why before it came to us, we could that right. we could understand it a lot more. Cool. Well, I'm just take, that, uh, take that on the chin, uh, Alistair. I'm sorry. No, I, think, I, think, I think it fairness so well underwater. That's as much a burden on us to make sure that these. Yes. No, 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 not yeah. because um, the, the understanding what the nature of the job is and what it's trying to improve and what the outcomes are. That's that's our responsibility and performance. Yeah. Um, you know, and so so that's something we, we will improve. Sure sorry, these things, sorry, Colin, you you are our official water man, as I said. You're our go-to people. Yeah, and what and what we're good at doing. Yeah, and and, and I doing. think we should be in a situation if it's a real partnership, which I think it should be, where I can pick the phone up and say, Colin, can you please explain this to me? Yeah, cool. And, and um, I can't do that. Yeah, well, look, um, we're really good at learning, so um, it's been good to chat to you, and you've made your points really clear. And um, we, you know, we, we can only work with Harry and um, and you and do a better job because um, clearly we haven't told you the story in the order that would make sense to you. We've surprised you, and we don't want to do that again. So you know, we've got to, we've got to, you've got to hold us to account for that. Um, Alec, you actually have a suggestion on this going forward how we can sort of um, improve our relationship with understanding where well and water are coming from and where our staff are coming from. Remind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if I could just say one, the very first thing we've got to do is in your LTP, where you have um, activities in your LTP that are sitting in that red zone up there, yep. we've got to put a range around them in your LTP. You've got to say they are about this scope of project, uh, estimated between one and two million dollars, and it's got a big asterisk on it and says there is no engineering design or scoping or risk management done yet because we've got to do that in the next LTP. So we've given a big fat range and we will let you know when we understand the true scope. That's the best thing we can do on everything in your LTP. Yeah. If we don't do that, we're just going to repeat this problem time and time again. I understand that totally. Yeah. But uh, what you suggest of discussing this, that maybe uh, councillors need to talk sit down with staff and see where the relationship sits and how we can best get the information. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the mental, mental notes for me is timing. So um, remember, um, in the previous LTP, when the, uh, those tickets were put up, the project would have been explained then. Right? So, so the, um, the Papawai extension, the need for it, the, um, all those types of things. And so the mental note to me is um, that we need to update councillors on some of those decisions that were made then. There would have been um, reports, there would have been information that were provided again. Right? Um, this, is, this is not a piece of work that just suddenly came out of nowhere. It's been something that's been planned for a long time. And it is planned around the, um, the growth assumptions for Greytown, the orchards, all that type of thing. So um, at the time, that would have explained to the previous council, and we are remiss in making sure that you that, um, and catching you guys up on some of the some of the reasons for why those works were needed, as opposed to the cost of the works. And, and also, just I guess in the timing as well, we have got to revise the number of those given to finance audit risk, and there's a pretty number of other story around it. And something that's actually a takeaway for us is to actually make sure we've got our, our reasonable stories as, as officers to present to committees and to council 
a good story around it rather than just a blunt number, which actually doesn't really tell the whole story. Anymore. Well, it comes back to my credibility thing because that was the number picked up by the press. Well, yeah. then they're obviously going to find a sort of risk because they're aware of that number of that. Yeah, I'm saying this, we need to make sure we've got a, 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 a proper picture around that number rather than just a blunt number. Yeah. Yeah. Which at the time, finance was said, why not bring this conversation here so we can sort yes. out yeah. how we get all these things work, you know, work. Because we're still in transition with Williams War, we're still learning both sides of the equation. Yeah. And so, you know, but coming back to Alistair's first point and your point, actually, um, Williams and Water, yes, will have some idea of what the world is shaping up and looking like. But again, it's up to us as council officers to inform you about, and then you make decisions what outcomes you want to see, you know, um, based on that information. We would rely on Williams and Water to help and provide information to us. Uh, but you know, they aren't our policy maker in terms of uh, water decision making. You know, they are the, uh, they're an advisor, but it is through the uh, policy, governance, and um, long term planning process that we make the decisions about those types of things. And there's more information that simply Colin can provide. It's, you know, what's the government doing? What's the, um, is there an, a national environmental standard for? Um, what are the drinking health standards for waste and so forth and so forth and so forth. But also these guys are all over that stuff. You know, they are in the business of national standards. That's so we don't agree. That's well, what we're we're to Yes and no. Else. So like for instance, uh, there are no national standards for waste water. So no. But for drinking, you know, for drinking. Drinking water there are. <coughs> yeah. so, you know, you guys are all over this because you're not going to design a system that doesn't meet the national standards of whatever yeah. we're talking about. So right, look, I don't accept yeah. what you're saying here. Sorry, so, just, just be clear. so there are national standards for drinking water. There are not for wastewater. So this is one of the reasons the government are doing the reform. Because there are um, about 70% of wastewater systems in New Zealand are operating on lapsed consent. Yes. Um, and there is no clear standard that says what the discharge at a wastewater standard should be. And so what effectively what's happening is you have a nexus uh, over a, between a 30 year period, depending on when a wastewater plant was built and what the standards applied at that time and when the consent expires. So, um, and equally new wastewater systems since, the, um, since um, Hastings have now introduced um, viral pathogen which is not a standard that applied to things like Greytown or um, um, Manborough when we built them. So you're in this co constant flux where this, the standard is lifting as well. And so um, we need to understand that as well. The simple answer actually, and we have been raising this with government, is actually to nail down a national environmental standard for wastewater. Um, it's part of the water reform. But I think the, um, Kerry, if I can just pick up the point, the example I'm giving you is that, you know, when the new council came in, they said they wanted safe water for all communities. You made that policy call and we've enjoyed um, delivering that to you. And that's, and that's how the model should work. So when it comes to waste, well, yes, we'll all inform each other, but you'll put the line in the sand as a council where you want to go and then we'll look to make it happen for you. So I think that is a Yeah, point. absolutely <laughs> right. That's everyone around the table at the time. Their priority was safe drinking. That was your first priority, and now we're moving on. To that's right. Other issues. That's, that's, and a, that's I, a pretty I cool story. We'll get the same outcome. <laughs> yeah. That was beginning to wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. But two points, Alistair. I think actually, because what's going on with changes in legislation, it's actually at a very high governance level that we probably know more than what Hunting Water does, or they've fed from governors what is likely or possibly being talked about. But there's a lot. You know, there's a lot you're not involved in. But I think with looking at this um, uh, chart that we have with the greens and the reds and everything, that is the vehicle for highlighting issues. Now, we've only just seen that in the last month. Yeah. And um, I think as long as Wellington Water have been consulted on the cover of all those um, uh, parts, that we are getting a good overview of projects that are coming up and the risks associated with them, that is our, our crucial document. Yep. Right, Ross, and then we'll need to be lost. I need to first with Steve the statement that Ross, yeah, but, sorry, uh, yeah, I'd just like to, uh, to note that I strongly advocated that we join Wellish Water in the previous regime, and by and large, I'm entirely satisfied with what you've done. You have inherited some legacy issues. However, it is a partnership, and you are in the process of designing and recommending fixes for us that are going to be long-standing, intergenerational, and very expensive. 
these these are strategic and they're more than just operational matters. And as has been noted before, as, as elected representatives, we want to be part of that conversation all the way through. So please don't blindside us. <coughs> Let us know what's going on and, and please be accessible and, and sensitive to our, our, our requests, which we will, of course, submit through observing proper protocols. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ross. Now, uh, Stephen, sorry. Yeah, um, so Stephen Wright on Managed Related Projects. Uh, the Featherston Wastewater uh, Consenting Project fits under our remit. Just to use Linda, you can just post the whole wall here. So Linda is our project lead who's got the uh, lead, lead in the project and they the place. Yeah. So um, we talked about communication and keeping yourselves advised of where we are with this project. This is, today is part of that. So we noted in our process. Um, that there will be key points at which we will come to the council and provide an update. Today is that update before we go to the community, um, and the next plan is the plan to go to the community next week. So today is to bring you up to speed before we go to the community. Um, in terms of where we are with progress on this project, we're still in the um, looking as wide as possible for options. A lot of, a lot of projects, um, people heads think they know the answer goes straight to the answer. Engineers, um, and I'm one of them, are very typical. We think they're the answer before we even have the problem. What's really important on these projects is to look as wide as possible at all options, not to be constrained, but to blue sky thinking. Yes. We need to be looking at the full range of possible options for this project. The work we've done to date has been around um, looking at what the objectives, what are the drivers for this project. So we've had a couple of workshops to look at. Um, what are the key objectives and then um, what are the key selection uh, criteria that we're going to define the preferred option. Um, we've also done some work around what the long list of options might look like. So we've engaged with um, uh, Greater Wellington Regional Council, with Public Health, to understand some of their views um, on those, what those options might or might not be guided by. And we're at the stage now where we develop, we, we put together a long list of options. So what we have now is a 16 options on that. And it's not 16, just 16. Within those 16s, there are sub options. But we've got a full range that will extend all the way from um, uh, decentralization, so composting, toilets and people's properties, all the way through to recycling the final effluent. So we've got a full range of options we're looking at. We're not looking in any way to reduce that options down at this stage. It's important that you don't do that because you might miss something that comes out later that could have been, what do you think of this option? And the key part of this work is to bring the community through this process, yourselves and the community, through the process we're going through to do that, to work our way through to a preferred option. So we met with the community already when we, we talked about really what we were doing, the fact we were now involved in this project and we had a process in place. And we explained to the community that we'd be coming back to them with a long list of options. So what intention to do is to meet with the community, present our long list of options, which we've done some research as well to make sure we've covered off those options that people included in previous submissions. So where people made submissions to the previous um, consent application. So we've, we've made sure we've covered off those. And we've tried to pick out every possible option. And for all those different options, what we're going to do is we're going to have a poster for each option. There's one option here, five. But how that option works, what the, what the proposal is, what its impact is, what its methodology is. And what we want to get from the public now is their feedback. We're interested in community feedback on all those different options because that community feedback will be used to help in our process of selecting a future option. We want to be also clear to the community and demonstrate that we're looking at anything, that they, any options they might have. So our plan at the moment is, is to have, the, um, have this community yes, on, on an evening and where we will have a, a room full of these options and our long list and invite people to come around and we'll be talking them through those options, seeking that feedback that we need, which is important when we go to the next stage, which is to reduce that long list of options to a short list of options that we do more work on. So at each stage, if you're not going to take all 16 or whatever that breaks down into, 20, 30 projects, and do a finite amount of work on every single one of those. You need to gradually reduce the options, and as you reduce the options, you do more work to find out to do more and more 
work to confirm the information around each of those. It's, it's, not, it's not about selecting options, it's about dropping options that don't meet those objectives. So we've had we've got a, series of, a whole series of objectives we're trying to meet, um, and it's really about which ones don't meet those objectives. I right? come down, gradually reduce the list until we end up with a preferred list of, um, of, of preferred options that we come back to the council and yourselves with. Propose. This is our preferred option for you to include um, in the LTP planning. So Stephen, at this stage, you won't have any cost around it, so no, no, we don't, no, we don't, we, no. will, we will look at, so when we go into the, when we get to the shortlist options, it's yes. after Christmas, and we look to reduce the short, we work on the shortlist, we will keep putting a costing range around each, we don't just look at capital costs, we'll be looking at total costs, so capital and operating costs, we will do a net present value on every single <laughs> But it's against a range, we only look at the range. Only when we go down to the preferred option, and it might be two, it depends, do we do a lot more detail to provide a more accurate price that fits with our manual that we can give you confidence with. <coughs> Alex, can I suggest to you some of the wrong word here? It's a long list of ideas, yeah. and that evolves to an option. Yeah, yeah I suppose because what the, that word option means that there's a, a product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In, I think it's a slightly misleading yep. looking at the consultation and engagement process that is so far down here that they're not even options, they're ideas. Yep. I think, I think you really need to look at, yeah, and I spoke about this, the, the language you use, given what has occurred in Featherston previously, is really important. Yes, because one wrong word will turn the community off you. And it only needs one word, and Alex is right, that, that, that gives a perception that this, these are the list of <coughs> solutions. They're not solutions, they're ideas. Okay. Yeah, the quite, a, quite a good idea, isn't it? It is, it is. It is. That's, that's right. I just say, when you, when you do this, and you talk about this, you really need to go over your language with it. Find to go because the last thing we need as a community is first in an uproar because they believe that you're situated, your appreciation. Okay. Yep, no, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree, Toto. <laughs> the word option, to my mind, seems to be a closed, it's a closed thing. Yeah. Ideas is bigger. To be cynical, it appears to me... <laughs> no. <laughs> Taking Harry's point, every small town in New Zealand is looking at this. I mean, more than half of them don't comply now. Our, our stuff. Um, why are we reinventing the wheel for the whole of New Zealand every day in every small town. I mean, I know you guys are dealing with other organisations and we're just looking at better stuff. Just, I mean, just over here, there's about, what, there's five already over here. And we're going back to square one and saying, what do you want to do? I mean, it just seems to me totally naive to sit and start again from square one and say, what do you want to do with your waste water? So, so can, um, I, can, I, can I answer? Um, so, um, there's a reason why the RMA is being reformed. Yep. Okay, and that goes to the heart. But the but the way the RMA works now, so um, if you take, and I'll give you a good example, the Basin Reserve. So the Basin Reserve was um, a consenting process done by NZTA to find a solution to connecting um, Wellington. It was thrown out of court because it did not do the full options analysis. That was a predominant reason why we're thrown out of court. If you start this process by saying we're going to this end of it, there could equally be people who will be opposed to a high cost solution and they'll say, what options analysis did you do? If you have not done this process, if you've not stepped it through, it will, um, then it will fail on the procedural issues under the RMA. Okay, so it's, it's very clear on my mind that if you um, are starting again, you are starting again. We yeah. are starting again. Yep. Yeah. We, we and so that means square one. All, all the ideas, no, no, all the ideas are on the table. When the bit that becomes easier is when, um, when because there's a whole lot of thing around um, the, the land that we now know, the groundwater, all the science around the area that we didn't have before. That's where the process will be easier, um, which is not the treatment option. It is around what the effect of a discharge would be in that particular location. So we know where the water supplies are, know where the balls are, 
all those types of things we didn't know when we started before. So um, if you bear with me, the, um, the, the, the sensible process is to take a measured and start again, reset, which is what the community asked us to do when we took the um, consent off the table and work through progressively with the full range of ideas about um, um, to make it work. You know, you, you can't, it is not the process, and I would not counsel you to go to this end of the process and say, right, we can focus on these options. I'm not asking, but yeah. I'm just saying every small town is going through this yeah. exercise. So I think you're, what you're saying, saying yeah. the same consultant is a separate question with regards to innovation and what else is coming on our mental standards. I can answer some of that. So first of all, every, every treatment plan is different because both what's coming in as a product, it will have slight differences. But when you dispose of the waste, it's different. If you're building next to a large river that you can then dilute that waste to, that's very different to Pedestal, which is in a very, very difficult um, position because trying to dispose of the final effluent in Pedestal is going to be very difficult. You've got a lake, you've got a small stream. It's, it's very complex, it's probably more complex solutions we're going to have to come up with because of that final disposal option. Uh, that's why we need to go and look at a full wide range and all the possible options because this doesn't have a simple fix. To enhance that work as well, we, we have got international support, so we have the earlier, we can be from France and from Norway, that will be supporting the work we do around an innovation. One of the things that you don't want to be with innovation is you don't want to be at the front of the queue. Because if you're at the front of the queue innovation, you're the one that pays all the money to try and get the innovation working properly. Want to be just behind that in terms of innovation. And the advantage we've got by having the early on Canby to support this is that they're, they're, they're able to go, they're able to bring us solutions that will be, which will be maybe new to New Zealand, will provide the answers, hopefully, that we'll be here to this. Yeah. But I think the other thing I'd say, Gary, is that um, you know, you, you're a, you know, this council is investing for future outcomes. Yes. You know, three, two years ago, how long ago was it when you, before you came in? Sorry, two years ago. Yeah. I mean, a year ago, we would have been squeezing this lemon plant into a budget that you would have set, and we would have tried to get away with the minimum standard. But what you're doing is you're investing in the future of um, Wairapa Moana, and you're addressing your carbon emissions, and you're brave enough to embrace that. Now, I think what you've done around the safe water proposal was fantastic because you embraced, you know, safe water to everyone and it was a known technology. All you're doing is moving into the next stage for New Zealand that everybody has to address. But I'd just say congratulations, you're walking into it front on to address the issues. You're not sitting back and saying, you know, I'm number, you know, I want to be 67th council to address this problem. You're tackling it at the right time. So, you know, I'd say, oh, buddy, strength your arm, mate. You know, tackle those issues as they stand. That's what I reckon. What you're saying is we're, we're leaders and not followers. Yeah, and you, you, it doesn't mean that you're going, and it doesn't mean um, chairman. Don't, don't but it doesn't mean. No, 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 but it doesn't mean that you're going to blindly run into something no. at the end that you don't know. You're going to have plenty of choices along the way, but I don't think you're going backwards at all. I reckon you're going forwards. Totally. Yeah. So, hope so, right. so, so, hope you're right. so the outcome yeah, right. Right. is very different to the outcomes that traditional small council would look at. The outcomes you're looking at. So, um, you know, we, we do want to make sure that, if possible, um, we're considering um, water reuse. We are considering mm. um, the, the, the um, carbon footprints of traditional mm. aerobic ponds and all those types of things. So, that, those are all outcomes that have changed in the spec, um, which were, wasn't on the table before. So, um, and that's, that's a conversation, is what are the outcomes people want, and then what are the ideas about how they could work. I'm very and that's very different. Yeah, very different. We, we, we also, as, as mentioned earlier, we've got to try and predict what those standards are going to be, because in two years' time, there'll be standards introduced, and we'll need to make sure that we we'll still want to finish the construction by then. So we, we've also got to be thinking about what that bar is going to be, where that bar is going to be in the future. There's a piece of what we're trying to do. Yeah, we, uh, if you work on pure water at the end, you will probably work out. <laughs> um, exactly. Or classic recreation. Just put it in Stephen, have you got more of, uh, of your presentation to do? We're, yeah, no, that's, that's we're getting uh, pushed off time a bit. I, I just, we did jump the gun a bit, and I had no one moved that we. Uh, Sorry, you have a fight of secret. Just before we move to move the report, I just like. Um, one of the questions council asked was around um, the withdrawal 
consent. Yeah. Um, so, Colin, would you like to explain? Oh, yeah. Um, so, I'm not quite sure um, how that happened, but uh, the, G the Greater Wellington Regional Council, <coughs> we made submission to withdraw the consent, the yeah. existing consent. They, were, they wanted to understand what was the, the next plan. They weren't prepared for it to be withdrawn without the, the, the second plan coming in place. So we've explained that to them. Um, they understand you're gonna move on a new um, consultation process and the consent's been removed. But they, we were operating on the 2012 consent, so we didn't need a new plan. No, no, they were, what they were worried about was that you, that consent was to address the problem of discharging wastewater into freshwater. And that's why we were working through a series of options, right? And when you asked us to take that off, that consent, that application off the table, they wanted to know well, what are you going to replace it with. Okay, so Colin, that comes back to so, my comment about language. Yeah. The language that you're using to talk to Wellington Water and to us may well be very different how you actually describe what's happening to the community because the community saw a particular word that this led them down a path thinking, why would we trust them? And that was the what was the word um, withdrawal. Withdrawal as opposed to on hold. You put it on hold. So the, the language to the general public is really critical in maintaining the confidence of the public. When we said, as a council, withdraw it, you said to the public, it's on hold. Oh, I see. So do you see that? Okay, good, good. No, but it's withdrawn now, right? So we'll right. watch that next summer. That's, 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 uh, uh, that's coming back and reflects back and says, well, it wasn't an ulterior motive not to withdraw. Yeah, no, it was just, I'm just putting it out there because you, I think you're missing the point about the better stuff. No, I'm not. We're really. actually very enthusiastic over there to get a solution. Yes, no, and, and we feel we've been but, blindsided for the last six years. Yeah, we're just, we're just learning um, about the depth of feelings around this particular issue and learning how to use our language properly. And I think we're getting the message pretty clear, aren't we? Yeah. It's just a, it's just a, it's a language. It's, um, yeah, right. Harry. That was it. I just wanted, it was just want to make sure that that was... Um, that yeah, was, well, that was um, uh, we, we do need to follow up procedure. Uh, Could I propose that we uh, the, receive it? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and well, uh, it can be said he said more frequently. So, as I said, we are... All in favour? All in favour? They're all in favour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I... Yeah. Against? Karen. Thank right. you. Right. Now, um... I'd just like someone to move that we receive uh, B2 of the Lake Ferry Wastewater Incident Report. Alex and obviously water play with that. I don't know. Against carry. Right. Do we have a five minute break? Do we have a five minute break? Yeah, you can have five minutes because we're one smoke. We, <laughs> we are under a, a bit of pressure. Alex, the plan from here. The last coffee you got me, you used my free one. And you told me to. Oh. Uh, 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 oh yes. Still seems to be just a bit of um, a lack of clarity. Just chatting to a couple of the members about the next stage at Featherstone. So did you want to just? Do we just want to make sure Stephen's clear about when that's yep. going to happen right. and what we're going to do? I'll just get these guys to send <laughs> Garrett, are you there? I think Garrett needs to be here for this. Um, where do you run to? Here's the G-Man. Where's he going? Someone upset him. I was, I was actually, I just walked back in with him. So, uh, You're having a run of, um, of big meetings, Colin, oh, after yesterday. <laughs> Actually, but he, um, he won't be impressed with the comments on that, will he? Who? Oh, Wayne. Cuppy. Oh, no, we were joking. I'm out of here. So, so, what the hell would you want to propose when you know you're going to get chopped out of flames? It's, okay. it's all about the newspaper. <laughs> but he got a big write up today. Yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. Got stuff this morning. I think it was the top, top one on stuff. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was it was starting to get nasty. Jenny Brash was calling him grumpy and horrible. And <laughs> it's, not, it's not very it's not very good though, is it? You know? It's probably good at all. The light was heavy. I'd just like to uh, um, just make a put a conflict of interest. Is that right? Yep. I feel like Garrick is copy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where's one? <laughs> Excuse his card. <laughs> yeah. This is a new 
big partners of the year. We've got very big guys. Righto, uh, we have been uh, received a late very wasteful incident report and has been taken up. And we were all in favour of it. So, Mr. Chair, could we just quickly have a clarification on the Feathers and Wastewater Treatment Part B step? Yes. Before. Okay. Sorry, can I? No, 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 fine. So, quickly. Uh, well, look, Stephen, we just outlined the next meeting when we're engaging with the community. It was just another discussion with Gary and others, but we just want to be really clear what the next step is before we leave today. So, yep. you, were, uh, you just want to explain this? Yep. Again? So the next step is to meet with the community next week. We'll be providing all the ideas around the room and we'll be engaging with them to get their feedback on those ideas. Um, from that, we will be then doing some, um, the team will be doing some workshopping around those ideas to understand what you indicate them or not. And we, we, I will come back to each of these um, meetings for, um, and provide us with uh, continuous updates as we go to, to give you confidence that we're um, delivering us. And Harry, do we, do we need to um, offer the opportunity to councillors to see the material before the meeting or anything? Yeah. Yes. I wouldn't agree. Yes, yes. 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 So we'll get it to, to Andy um, Monday next week. I was going to suggest that we have a regular slot on the agenda of assets and services, well on the border, uh, to give an update. Yeah, and if needed, if we're getting into a point that we need to know what's going on, whether we can call an extraordinary meeting and be briefed on it. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a common theme around the table. We need to know what we're getting out there. Yep. So by next week, you mean the 12th back on again? Yes. So, so, for that, so I just want to be super clear today, Chairman, that we understand that we've got to get all that material out to yep. councillors. If they've got it and they understand what we're presenting, then the yep. 12th is going ahead. I just don't want to be lack, I don't want any lack of clarity today because it's quite important from our program point of yep. view. Are you happy with that? Yep. Very happy. Right. Can that be sent to councillors? Yeah. Yeah. It was the last lot wasn't sent to us, we didn't get it. No, I'll send it to Thank you. Amy. To Amy. Yeah. 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 Actually, not Georgia. I'm not here. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Georgia. Okay. Thanks, Georgia. Ah, uh, right. And then, the, I mean, the only thing, that, I don't know if it helps, Harry, but, you know, when these things happen with some other places, you know, you just can set up a Zoom meeting and just um, yeah. chat about what yeah. you see in yeah. front of you with Stephen if you want it, you know? Yeah. I think the important thing, though, is that it's public. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not doing it in a workshop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah, we record them and put them on every time. That's what I think the, um, the regular updates to and services, as Stephen is suggesting, is the appropriate way to deal with you. Cool. Thanks. Thanks uh, yeah, I guess what you're getting at, Colin, is yeah, with those papers come out to assets and services. We need a better understanding of what to talk about it. A Zoom. It helps with other councils because you know what happens is if you get that stuff and you just have a burning question right then, you know, we Stephen can get on Zoom with some of them and just talk you through it rather than building up a misunderstanding. You know, you get a yep. deal with it straight away, it's just a helpful yep. way to make it faster. Yep, yep, right. Thank you. Now, for the third time, <laughs> uh, we're moving on to uh, B28 Ferry Wastewater Incident Report now. Um, <clears throat> I guess it's a uh, pretty damning report in a lot of respects. Uh, do you, do you want to talk yeah, to us? I'd like to speak to it if that's all right. right. Yeah, that's so, um, <coughs> the, you, you're aware that uh, we have we have a, um, we have a re, you know you have you have a re resource consent for um, the, uh, the remaining treatment of wastewater before it's discharged into the environment. Um, and that consent uh, is, um, at the way it stands at the moment, is the preferred position is to put it through an underground um, field system. And if, and if that's not working, that it would go through a UV treatment before it goes into the environment. Uh, you, you planned, you put forward a 40K uh, budget in your LTP to, for us to un do an investigation around the condition of that field drain. Uh, and we are in the process of doing that at the moment and look forward to updating you on that um, assessment that we're doing. Our, our preliminary view today, which if you don't mind me just saying is not supported yet, but I just wanted to let you know, um, it looks like the, the, the field system has reached the end of its useful working life. 
uh, and so we will have to do something um, about that. So we, we, we will um, come back around the recommendations um, around what to do about that, whether it's to renew it or there's, you know, there's other options, um, but on the face of it, renewing the current system, which looks pretty good, um, seems like the, the logical solution. So, and that will require you to place some, um, we we'll, we'll parry and view it around um, putting that, um, placing that you know, renewal in the, in the LTP and the forward look. So, so that, that's, that's the management of the asset part. Then, then we come to the not so good part. Um, and, you know, and thank you to the mayor. You know, when you employed Wellington Water, we've made a, you know, we've made a commitment to all of our owners that, you know, against tra you know, a traditional underreporting all around the country on these issues, we will never do that. You know, Wellington Water will just tell you exactly when things haven't gone right. And, you, and we just have to have an understanding that until we get on top of these issues, um, you know, it's the best way to manage it. It's, 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 um, it's a bit tricky and it's hard work, but it's the right way to do it. So, so our reflection on this is uh, in, the, in the transfer um, from, as, you know, organisations, you know, for us looking after your water um, assets, um, we, you know, we just didn't, we didn't have a good handle on the critical nature of that asset. It is a critical nature. It's a small asset, but it's a critical asset because it discharges wastewater into the environment. And if you don't get it right, you know, it, you're polluting the environment. And, um, and you know, if we had our, if we had our time again, we would really understand how we would have managed that um, contractor and um, the way in which they they've done the work there, which you know, on the face of it, looks pretty poor. So you know, we're still working through with Harry and you and around, you know, how we manage, um, you know, manage, you know, manage all those issues, and we've got a good plan of attack. But at the moment, it would look like that if we, if we understand, you know, what is to be done with the asset in its own right. Um, and, and the consent can be continued to be managed using the UV plant, then there is no particular reason to, re, you know, to repair it. Because uh, if we repair it, we're really just spending a lot of money um, that wouldn't be, wouldn't be useful long run. So we haven't come and we haven't bottomed that out with you and Harry yet, um, but that's the way um, uh, we're looking for. Um, we're also asking Harry and um, Ewan for permission to have another chat to the contractor in this case, because um, as you know, as we've grounded out the, because we've just been, we've done an audit and we've passed it on to you, but then the company has to decide what our own response to that audit is, and, and we're just working through that with Harry and Ewan at the moment. Um, but you know, there's a, there, you know, we we we've got to be clear just where the accountability lies and what we're going to do about that, and um, we'll be able to report that at a future meeting. Yeah, yeah I figured there was a process we had to go through on this, and. Uh, I guess the burning question from a lot of people is, and I'm pretty spooked up down Lake Ferry, the council's going to pay up to $400,000 on repairing this. But what you're saying is, <clears throat> yes, we've got to do something, but we don't have to do it straight away. Well, we'll keep you posted on that. And the other thing is we um, we had a misunderstanding with you and when we gave them that number. Yeah. The, the, the number to repair, to make it workable again, is 170 k that the, we, but what we have to do is give you a, I should say, 170 um, plus or minus 50, yeah. because it'll be days, right? Um, as I can see, writing it down. Um, but the other thing is, we have to give you the, the true cost of the renewal of the yeah. field as well. But we're talking about just um, taking those busted pipes and joining them back together, repairing the meters that were run over by the trucks and things, and making it operable again. But our advice to Harry and Ewan is that is that would be a waste of money. Because you're just all you're doing is renewing. I mean, making something work that's yeah. reached the end of its useful life. So there's no point investing like that. So, but we haven't got, we haven't made the full recommendation to officers yet. So we just need to give us a bit more time. And part, of, sorry, Jeffrey, just part of that is also um, the consent indicates that we can UV treat and discharge. So we just need to clarify that the, um, we can do that under the consent, because that gives us the time to make the decision whether we, we fix it one rather than do a half-assed job fixing it. Um, and then having extra cost to then make the fix, strip it all out and renew it. We're better to actually um, renew it once and for all, um, but the, really the clarification is around the nature of the consent. So we're not, at the at present, we're not reaching consent? No. no. You're entitled to use the UV plant. The question okay. Harry's just asking, yes. you're saying is can we can do it, can we do it for another 12 months while we develop a solution? Yes. And the advice today suggests <laughs> we can, because, you know, we, we couldn't, I mean, it might be our own fault 
that we've ended up breaking the system, but it is an accident. Yeah. And therefore, if we've got an alternative in place, then and they know we're going to do something about a long run, yes. then the consenting agency may well be happy with that. Yeah. So, when do you think we'll um, sort of have a final solution on this? Well, I think I think by the next meeting we should give you some good advice as to what it's looking like. Yeah. Sorry, when? By the next, oh, by the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Asset services. Asset services. And there's any other options? <coughs> oh, just, just a question. Uh, okay, there's costs involved in this, but there's, there's clearly a contract of liability. Uh, you said you were going to have a, a talk to them, but do we have any plan for pursuing a uh, third party liability in this or seeking recourse from insurance? Yeah, we, we, we've, we've suggested to officers that they look at the insurance element of it as well. Um, and we haven't quite worked out who's going to approach the contractor, but um, it looks like it'll, you know, I'm pretty keen to do it. Right. Um, because it's a, it's a tricky situation because, um, you know, in my mind, they, you know, there's an, there is an obligation to understand what's there before you work, even if you have asked other people to lay it out. And, um, and we need to have a grown-up chat about that. Yep. Okay. The, the remiss of us not to do it. Yep. Uh, Ross. Uh, <laughs> uh, a couple of questions. One, one is, um, are we exposed from any liability with the regional council for breaching consent? No, because there's no discharge of wastewater to the environment. And, and, and the, 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 you, you see in the report the UV plant wasn't operating when we went in there. It's obviously been broken down for a while. Yep. It's all fixed and running now. So. Um, the, and the incident itself did not create any wastewater going into the environment. It stayed on land, and so it's, it's not a great look, but you no. are not um, liable for any consent breach. Not, not great for the wetlands either. Uh, wait, wait, but no, it stayed on the, yeah. stayed on the land, right? Yeah. Stayed on. Um, and so the, the best way I can explain that, Garrick, is I was saying to Harry earlier, you know the amount, when we had the failure of the, you know, of the um, pipeline to the landfill in Wellington City? Yep. Um, so we trucked it at great cost, $14 million um, over that six month period. There was no, there was no um, consenting issue because we didn't discharge the environment. We, we managed around it. It's the same issue here. You know, we haven't discharged, so you're okay. Um, in terms of the uh, subsurface, um, I've still got a credibility problem. Is there any objection to this committee asking for a third party peer review? No, you, you could, but um, I think you'd want to, and we, you know, we'd leave that up to you to decide. But at the moment, we run it, we're running through our normal auction renewal process, and that goes through our three waters decision making that Ian chairs, and we're very happy to lay out that process for you. Um, and you know, from our point of view, that's a robust um, way of making decisions on options for these sorts of issues. But if you, you know, if you've got some confidence issues around that, we, we, don't, we wouldn't be worried about a third party review. We could incorporate that into the decision making process. I just don't think you need it. Uh, I'm just looking at the report and I'm sitting here getting really stressed saying, how could somebody, you know, cut trees down in the middle of winter and expect to be able to drive bulldozers over boggy land? I mean, it's fairly mind boggling stuff. But that's, um, yeah, that, that reflects poorly on um, oh, right. part. No, 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 actually, mostly on. The, the partnership between South Wairapa and um, Wellington Water because it's, it's, your, it's a critical asset and you know we should have um, looked after it. Absolutely. Yeah, but, uh, but unfortunately, you know, through whatever circumstances that occurred, um, and it, this, this got through the, the, the loops, but it would never do that now. We fully understand your assets and what we do about it on your behalf. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, um, so I'm, I'm interested in, uh, in the report here, we, uh, the liability issues. Uh, and I'd just like to know uh, what Wellington Waters, uh, how, you, how you protect yourself insurance-wise against incidents like this. So when you read the report, obviously um, some advice was given yep, to do a trench. Uh, whether that advice was Correct or incorrect has led to, or how the contractor took it. So there's a there's a question between Wellington Water and the contractor who said what, how, and what eventuated. 
that has nothing to do with the council. So in terms of the cost of $170,000 to repair this, if we go down that, is this a cost that will be worn by you or the contractor? And if so, how do you cover your liability for these, yep. these issues? So that's a good question. So there's $170,000 technically to repair, make it operable again. It's unlikely we will go down um, that route. And in other words, it'll probably be renewed and so we'll never repair it. But you still have to ground out the accountability for the damage. Yeah. And that $170,000 is still a claim that could go towards Correct. cost of. That's exactly right. So we've um, been talking to Harry and you and how, how we could um, manage that. The way we come to the table on that is that you you own you own the insurance around the assets, so we would like you to um, investigate your opportunity to make a claim for the damage, and then we're saying that um, we we hold self insurance, water holds self insurance, so we promise to uh, all the owners of uh, Wellington Water, all six, that if we made a mistake, um, we pay it out of the operational overhead of the company. So that means, for example, when we were fined uh, at Porirua for a discharge, that we, the, the judge said it was a, um, an act of, um, help me, what did it say? I um, can't remember the words now. Um, oh, God. Huh? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 it's the opposite. Well, <laughs> almost like willing, willing, um, willing, willing, willful, yeah, willful <laughs> negligence on behalf of our operator. Um, and so we were fined a large amount of money. And you know, and the and then we pay our portion of that out of our operational budget, which hurts us greatly because we don't have much money. But it also, the owners have to understand that they are making a contribution. Sorry, to that. Spoil that comment, but <laughs> <laughs> they are making a contribution. So do you know what you want to mean? So if we pay out anything, all of the councils are underwriting Wellington Water's performance. So it's a big step. But we've we've um, we've started the ball rolling with Harry, and we will ground it out. And I'm sure he's happy to reply report how that gets settled. Thank you. Because it's also the nature of the claim. Um, so, so you can, if you claim to repair, then the insurance company is wanting to, go, want to see the repair made. Yeah. Right. So you can't just say we'd like to take a portion of the money that was for the repair and then apply it to this. Yeah. So, um, so it, it's, it's not straightforward. Yeah. And, I, and I would say there's a difference between um, allowing the contractor on site to run over all of the equipment uh, versus the decision made by one of our staff members to cut a trench, which is a diff are two different things. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Uh, we are running out of time. I think we uh, will let uh, you and Harry continue to talk on that and make your updates would be fine. Thank you. Um, we're now moving on to the drinking water and wastewater improvement program update. Uh, would someone like to move to receive that? It'll be Elsa and uh, it will be Ross. <laughs> oh, yeah. All of Wakey, yeah. wakey, Ross. Um, right. I think you've got to start with one on those. Could I just make a general comment on this before it starts? Yep. I would like to say on this particular case, well done. Thanks, mate. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think I'm going to say this is the last one, but I have great confidence in the way you are looking after it. Not so much in a wastewater mistake, but in this, I am, I, you know, and I think um, all of us would say this is a vast improvement for where we started. Absolutely. Uh, so I can <coughs> to you guys yeah. for what you've done. I congratulate you on that because that was the first cap of the rank as far as we were concerned. You've nailed it. So, um, thank you. I think that if we can continue that on with the wastewater, we'll uh, be happy champions around here. Just one other question the uh, uh, protos protozoa for Greytown, are we, are we yeah. nearly at that point? Are we? Yeah, so, so that's, de that's dependent on, a, um, I guess, the, the pipeline on the fund of, of the project at Waiheni, which enables us to. Um, bring on that um, extra ball so that we can substitute the supply into Greytown, so it's dependent on that. No, I, was th I was thinking that the, the produce are at Memorial Park. We've got to know the, the state. Yes, yeah, so, so we've got yeah. the operating works. <coughs> the, operating works. You, 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 the way the system's set up, it's, it's tricky, you know, we've got to make sure we've got enough storage so we can operate. Right. So, yeah, it's a sequence there. But our, our intention um, is to, as I understand it, is to try and Make that green and, and yes, 
um, before the end of the financial year because this will be right. this will be the last year when you report your DIA measures as non-compliant on drinking water standards. Yeah. From then on, yeah. you'll be the first small council in New Zealand to be saying tick. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're all pretty proud about that. Yeah. Yeah. Our focus is to get that green as soon as possible. So yeah, that's great. Right. <clears throat> No more questions on that. Thanks, guys. You've done a great job on that. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, part of the Oh, part of the Oh, no. Oh, no. So, um, so it's part of the paper. It's the paper water. Oh, and then there's a separate appendix from wastewater. If well, I, if there's, uh, Ian's just saying there's no questions. I mean, basically, we're just going to we're just repeating the same process for wastewater that we've done with drinking water. Yeah. Um, and you know, Ian's designed a process of you know, working our way systematically all through the plants, understanding the risks, and coming back with proposals. And we're only early days in that. Right. And although we did want to stress about the valve, didn't we, at Martin? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that's literally on the way forward. So. It's, which takes that human um, error rate out of the, the two incidents we get. Yeah, uh, I, I just seem to go back to Alistair's point about the wastewater. You know, it, it was it is a priority thing. Like so, we, you know, the, the highest priority was drinking water. And, you know, taking the feedback. You know, from the couple of slip ups that you know, you know, put that show show us the real wastewater now. So don't I don't want you thinking there's any difference in capability. You know, we've, we've got great capability across the three waters. I, I believe you know, got the best people on it. So. Make sense. Thank you. Yep, I think yeah. <clears throat> Look, we're heading heading in the right direction, and uh, I guess if we're going to have a uh, standard of genuine item of assets and services on this, we'll be updated regularly. Which you know, we'll follow. Thank you. Right, moving on to B five, which is uh, Papua Road and Pino Road wastewater. Cost uplift report. Would someone like to move? I'll move there. Yep. Yeah. A few more favour. Yes, carry it. So here we go. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, if there's if there's no objection from anyone, I think we have to park this because we've talked about it. Yes. And Wellington Water are going to provide a report yeah. on these two projects specifically. Yeah. So maybe we park it till the next till we get that report and a bit of more information on it. Yeah, we're helpful. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Because we, yeah, we're, looking I mean, at we're, we're, we're talking on something we don't know a lot about yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. so, if I can, I just um, get agreement. Is we will we will deliver um, two fact sheets on both projects. Yep. The fact sheets will, will lay out why the work is being undertaken. Yep. It'll give you a bit of a potted history of um, how the budget was set and yep. where the budget's up to now. Um, and then a conclusion from Wellington Water around, you know, how will you be assured of this value for money going forward? Yep. Uh, we're ready to deliver those quickly. Be great. Could we have also the consequences of, of the, sorry, oh, in, increased flow rates? What, will there be any ongoing consequence to the existing ponds in either Martinborough or Greytown short term? Because I know there's a, there's a you know, five date coming up. Is, and I'm, and I'm my gut feel is it's because we've got more uh, subdivisions going in. Yeah, that, that, that's a really good example. You know, when I told you about, we talked about value for money right at the beginning, you know, that, that's a system question, right? It's not about projects. That's, uh, uh, well, yeah. Based on the growth of the area of your towns, you know, is there latent capacity in your wastewater treatment systems to accept that growth? And, um, you know, that's a system question. That's where value for money comes. If it hasn't, it shouldn't be growing. If it, if it does, then you're able to grow. So that's we can answer that question. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. And could we just get a bit of a background brief on this to as Harry identified these two projects obviously were yeah. in the in the mix before Wellington Water came up board. So let's get a bit of history on these two for the councillors. Yeah. It'd be quite nice to Which is a thing is essentially what the need is and what was the what was the board projections or that kind of stuff. Could that could, I'm sorry, which could, is I, can we get a once this is done, can we do some sort of pressing on that? Because it's, you know, it's, it's actually out there pestering. Mm. Yep. Yeah, yeah okay. Okay. you're right. We'll, we'll make it. Might yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It'll, right. be in, it'll be in a month's time. That's right. Yeah. 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 And, if, and if I was to give you some guidance on that, you know, you want to go out to your community and say, you know, we're building these um, assets, critical assets to maintain your system. And here's how we're demonstrating value for money for you. Um, unfortunately, you know, what we've, you know, we've learned about, about these two projects is, 
you know, when we put the first estimate together, that it's not a benchmark for comparisons about the second estimate. It's a, it's a way of holding a problem statement to be further investigated. So we've got to work out how we say that in a way that helps you. Yep. Otherwise, you'd be too scared to put a single number back in your LTP. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, we are now moving on to B6, which is the. Uh, well, I think that's us. We can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Is, is, it, is it up in the back? Feel free to move out. Um, can I just say a few words in concluding? Yes. So, I mean, it's always um, it's always nice to come over and chat to you. Um, you know, you, it's good because you're so direct, and um, we can we can chat. Um, you know, there's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, the messages are coming are coming through pretty clear for me because I wanted to come over and hear them. You know, we've got to, you know, we just got to up our communication yep. um, to the officers and council around what we're doing. Um, and I suspect the second part is that, you know, if we get into this routine of a regular report, then we'll be over to explain ourselves and yep. hopefully um, there'll be less and less surprises if we get into that model. Yep. I mean, is that the best takeaway yep. from the meeting? Yep, absolutely. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we'll address that by giving our permanent spot on the assets and services mm. agenda. Mm. Uh, we're looking forward to a better mm. relationship, I guess. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, well, thank you very much for having us. We appreciate thank your time. It's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the rise of the beach level over a, a period of time. So whether this is a cycle, we don't know. Uh, GNS are actually doing some work at home starting in February to understand the nature of the digging down three or four metres that was agreed to by the Māori Standing Committee. Yeah. I think, you know, we don't need there was a, some parts are rising, some parts are rising. I think it's more right. like, there's no simple answer. Okay, but of course, so it's, 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 it's a council, and what we have to do mitigating costs to uh, to Nawi and Cape Palliser and all that, if, if it does, I think there's a logical way to do it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, and that's why I said this is a philosophical that's question, not a, not a practical one. But I just part of you know when we when we think about these issues, we need to sort of take into account that actually nature still carries on, uh, and if there's one thing we do know. We can't control nature. So, and particularly water. It's a great yeah. all sides. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, no, and it, let's, let's, let's assume that this works. Are we going to find that yeah, we've got an entire coastline of this sort of stuff? Is that, a, is that an outcome we would want Point to see? Point taken, Alice, that we need to move on because Ross is good. Thanks for pointing out. You go away, you uh, look, we, we've only got one, uh, one, to go. one to go, which is the uh, actual item. Someone like to move, we receive that. I would like to be right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'll see you there. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. I'll say, oh, yes. Right. You guys first, and then I can um, bring any. Bring on the action items that you want to bring up. Yeah, we'll start. Thank you. Um, uh, no, it's still the self explanatory. Yeah. Um, I've just one on action item 81 and 424. When are the policy reviews going to happen? Is there any, any time to put on that? Do you know, Cal? Uh, it runs around the wastewater of sewer platforms. The 424 is the actual signing policy. So that's quite helpful. We haven't got the program in so far. Yeah. They're on the list. Yeah, they're on the list. No, no, that's fine. Um, it's a long list. <laughs> I, I guess they can go off the action item. Uh, this one's the works that started. That's great. And you know, thank you for um, dealing with 97 Main Street uh, and your email to us. And I look forward to when the um, obviously we don't, we don't trip over. The we don't trip over. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Um, and I just I brought up before you and the uh, 232, it would be great that if we could see those photos of uh, the train. Two, three, two, we've been sent. We've been sent. Uh, we've been sent. 236. 236. Should have sent them out. That'd be wrong photos. We'll see. We'll, we'll put a big sort of map together and we'll put this all bring up the next committee. And Good. It's we'll yeah. yeah. quite good stuff. And direct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no other. Thank you, Alison. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that, I declare the meeting closed. I think we've had a pretty good discussion today. It's a very good discussion. Um, I think more importantly, we've found a way forward on it. Thanks, guys. Very good. Thanks, JP. Thanks, JP. Thank you, Suzanne. Well, well controlled. Gary <laughs> was getting a bit excited. <laughs> we have a, um, a meeting closed. Thank you for the meeting. Thank you. 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 Thank you.